On clarification also, some of you might be thinking, what about Ramadan? Surely Laylatul Qadr, surely Ramadan. I tell you, very interesting. Ramadan, the nights are better. The last 10 nights of Ramadan are the best nights. Here we are talking about the best days. You see the difference? Why? Because in Ramadan, we have one night that is more powerful than a thousand months. And that is Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Allah says the night of decree known as Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. So that's the best night. And the best 10 nights are the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But the days, because there is the day of Arafah being the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, is the day of Arafah. It is the most powerful day. It is Yawm al Hajj al Akbar. It is called the day of Hajj. That is what it is. You miss Arafah, you missed Hajj. What should we do? Well, I tell you the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu you want to know how powerful is the day of Arafah. If you have gone for Hajj, you are in Arafah. But if you have not gone for Hajj, the sunnah is to fast on the day, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. Try not to miss that fast because the hadith says, you kafiru sana, it forgives and expiates the sins of the previous year and the current year. Amazing how powerful this beautiful day is. One day, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, fast it. Fasting for the non-haji. Non-haji means those who are not for hajj. If you are in hajj, it's not a sunnah to fast on that day because it's a day of action. And it's a day when you are actually going to be in Arafah, it's hot and whatever else might be, and you might be busy. It's not a sunnah to fast. When you are in hajj, you are there. When you're not in hajj, wallahi, our, our Eid is going to be on a Friday. Thursday, to fast that particular Thursday is such a great reward. I encourage yourselves and myself, inshallah, if we can, to fast on that day because it's a beautiful deed and Allah says you know what I love the good deeds the most during this uh, season so much that if you are to fast on that day I'm going to forgive all your sins I'm sure we all want a new beginning I'm sure we all want redemption I'm sure we'd all love to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here Allah is giving you a bonus now have you ever thought that how merciful a Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every little while he gives us a blessed day a blessed season. We have Muharram. You have the 10th of Muharram. Powerful. Subhanallah. You have the season of Hajj. You have the season of Dhul Hijjah. One after the other. It comes two, three times a year. And this is amazing. Because Allah keeps reminding us, no matter what shaitan has done to you, my mercy, one droplet of it will wipe out whatever shaitan has done. Remember that. You can have worked with shaitan for 70 years. And then you can have spent one minute with Allah. That one minute, trust me, if it was done correctly, it will wipe out 70 years of what the devil has built within an individual. So never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. But we need to be moved. We need to be motivated. Too many distractions happening around us. That is why Allah says, hang on, start concentrating on your farad. That which is compulsory, you'll enjoy it. How many of us pick up the Quran and we read even a verse every morning? I promise you, my brothers and sisters, try it. It's not asking of much. One verse, one verse every morning, even from your phone, your application on your phone. Pick it up, read one, only one. Trust me, it will go to two and to three and you will enjoy it. And you will look at the meaning of it and you will start passing it to your friends. That's the power of Allah. If haram can magnetize you so much when you forget Allah, trust me, when you start remembering Allah, that halal will magnetize you in a more powerful way. Trust me, it requires an effort. You see, one might ask that, so if Allah knows everything about us, then why, did, why didn't he just tell us, okay guys, you know what, I'll give you Jannah, don't worry about your deeds. No, the thing is, Allah has placed us here in order to recognize us with us being our own witness. So Allah knows me, Allah knows you, Allah knows everything about us. But what about you? Imagine there was a court case without witness, they just jailed you. You would say, but I didn't do this. So the judge says, well, we knew you were going to do it. So we jail you, you know, before. I remember there was a, a certain a person, whenever he used to send a child to go and do something, he used to call him and slap him and say, now take the milk. He says, but why did you slap me? He says, what's the point of slapping you after you drop the milk? I'd rather slap you before you drop the milk so that you don't drop it. 
So similarly, it is injustice or it is unjust for anyone to punish us for a crime we did not commit. So Allah says, go to earth. When you go to the earth, do whatever you have to. I have told you what to do, what not to do. When you come back, you can bear witness against yourself. You can bear witness against yourself. Did you do this? Yes, I did. Who did it? You. Do you deserve the punishment? Yes. Guess what? Through my mercy, I'm going to forgive you. You can still go to Jannah. That is Allah. May Allah grant that to us. That is the Rahmah of Allah. Subhanallah. Okay, we got a question uh, about the day of Arafat here. Um, the sister says basically, when I go back to India, um, the day of Arafat or the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah in Saudi will be the seventh or eighth day of Dhul Hijjah in India. So, what do I do regarding my fast? How, what advice can you give us on fasting uh, the, the, the days that we need to fast basically? This is really a very, very important question, which we used to face uh, in uh, North America uh, a lot. Now that goes back to the same point of differences between scholars concerning the beginning of Ramadan. There are two main schools of thoughts in that regard. One school which they consider uh, the unity of the, uh, the, the Christian by the meaning uh, they say that if the crescent or the moon has been cited, the moon citation has been cited anywhere in the world, they believe that there is only one moon, which is true. That's a fact. So if it's been cited in Cairo, that means it's already been born. So the neighbor countries, such as Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Syria, etc., uh, they don't have to bother and make an effort. If they couldn't see the moon because of a cloud, because of uh, darkness or smoke, it's been already cited. So everybody should follow the first country which cited the moon. Based on the fact that the Prophet ﷺ said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi. And based on the same hadith, the other school of thought relied on, well, we could not cite the moon ourselves. And we are an independent country, or an independent nation. And of course, in the past, the, the Meccans wouldn't have an access via phones or cell phones or satellite to know whether the Medina people have sighted the moon or not. And you can imagine the difference, the time difference, and how many uh, mile, hundreds of miles they have to travel before they get to, to know about each other. So they said that each country uh, has its own independent moon citation. And these two opinions are both valid. While we have to keep in mind one thing. The most important fact that we should really rely on the moon citation, not on the calculation. For instance, this year, North Americans, Muslims in North America, uh, followed the calculations of NASA, etc., which they began fasting the same day in which countries have or were able to cite the, the crescent. That's good. If the calculations coincide and matches the moon citation, that's perfectly fine. But what if it uh, does not match, does not coincide the moon citation? We give precedence to the moon citation because this is an act of worship. Actually, citing the moon in the beginning of the Islamic month, especially Ramadan, of course, the month of Dhul Hajj as well, is an act of worship. Citing the moon is an act of worship. So we give precedence to citing the moon. Same thing applies to uh, the issue of the day of Arafah. That one of my family members and one of your family members have gone to perform Hajj from India, from Pakistan, from North America, from uh, the Arab countries. They are all following the country which has the Kaaba, mm -hmm. right? The Holy Lands. So if they say tomorrow is the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah, then there tomorrow is the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. If other countries rely on the moon citation in this country, that solves the problem. But if they do not, and if this is their practice during Ramadan and during the month of the Hajjah and say, we cite the moon by our own selves and they could not cite the crescent or the moon, then if you follow them, you're perfectly fine. Unless if they say that we only rely on calculations because calculations, it does not have any presence in this act of worship. Unless if it confirms the process of the moon citation. So if your country said that we could not cite the moon, while the Saudis said that we've cited the moon, and tomorrow is the ninth. And the ninth actually is going to be day after tomorrow, and in some countries, two days difference, minus or plus. So if you follow your country and fast on the ninth, that should suffice you, inshallah. 
while it would be best if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring this entire ummah in the east and the west in every corner on the globe and they say that if the moon has been sighted anywhere let's all begin fasting and we see that the representatives of the entire Muslim nation coming from every corner in the globe uh, observing the day of Arafah on the ninth day so I'm telling them no no today is, the not, is not the ninth day it would be best if we can all fast uh, for those who are not performing Hajj, because the Prophet وسلم, says uh, that observing fasting on the day of Arafah removes the sins of the past year and a year to come. It's an expiation for one's mistakes and sins for two years, the past year and a year to come. But if the country which you are living at, whether it's India, North America, uh, China, they said, no, our ninth is such and such, and you're following the same routine in Ramadan, then if you follow them, fasting on the ninth day according to their estimation counts as fasting the day of Arafah as well. فحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان